Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. After a slight technical situation, we are ready to go. Welcome to Eagle Bend Community Church. Now the announcements by the famous cook, Betty. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I don't think we have any visitors this morning, so welcome everyone. It's so good to see you all, and um, it was really good to get away, and um, Bruce wound up with bacterial pneumonia, and we came back on Monday. My computer, um, my computer uh, uh, had, was corrupted, so it's like, really? I mean, what else can go? And then it rained, and it was cold. So it's like, it was a trip. It was really a trip. <laughs> so, but other than that, he's uh, much better with his bacterial pneumonia, and then we just move on to next week and can't wait to see what that's going to bring. So <laughs> anyway, um, birthdays, Arlie, Arlie's birthday is uh, the 12th, right? I've, I left my paper. I forgot what day it was. So it's the 12th. So we'll sing happy birthday to Arlie. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Arlie, happy birthday to you. All right, and anniversaries, it's our anniversary on the 15th, thus that's why we're going to Alaska on the 23rd, because that's our anniversary present, yay, so, yay. So, um, I, I do need a couple of things from you guys, though, before we go. So, but I want to read this, um, this card. This is from Bernadette. And Bernadette's still in a lot of pain. She has uh, fluid on her lung. So she's really struggling. So let's keep her in our prayers um, through this journey, because this has been kind of a tough journey. It says, thank you for your beautiful prayer pillow. I am grateful for our church and all the prayers and cards sent during my surgery and recovery. Bernadette, number one. As you all know, she's number one, Bernadette's number two. We did have a Bernadette three. No, we, we had a Bernadette two. You were three. She moved away, and now you're two. So, <laughs> do I? You got promoted, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, the helping hands are going to meet tomorrow, and this is from, I'm going to read this from uh, Debbie. You better be there at 9.30 in the morning. That's what she says. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it says, be ready to start meeting at 9.30, because she has a big agenda. Look for an email later today with the agenda and what to bring. So be on the lookout for that one. And then um, the ladies' luncheon, Pat Cox. Pat, raise your hand. Everybody knows who you anyway, but Pat's going to give her story. And it's a great, great story. So please sign up for that. Uh, scripture reading, I do need uh, somebody to sign up for the last d Sunday of July. Okay, thank you very much. Because I need it. I have to do two weeks of bulletins to get ready before we go. So I need it. That was the one thing I needed. And also, if you uh, feel it in your heart to bring flowers, that would be really wonderful, too. And uh, there was, I feel like there is something else, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, thank you. And I have that right there. Oh, my gosh, yes. Okay, the flowers today was brought by uh, Bernadette, too, in loving memory of her husband, who passed away 15 years ago. So thank you for the flowers. Really appreciate it. And the men had their little barbecue yesterday. That was so cool. I mean, that was really, really cool, wasn't it, guys? Yeah, say, say yes. Yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it was really great, and it was so fun to see everybody out there talking and having a really good time. I was m most impressed that you were actually talking to one another and that you were actually saying a lot of fun things. I could hear you from the kitchen. So it, that was really a fun, fun, fun time. And I'm really grateful that you guys came, and they decided to do it on a quarterly basis, which I think is really great. You had... You had 11 guys there, and that's, um, what did you say, 89% uh, of the congregation, <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever that means, so.
got my glasses. Hi, everybody. I have a cute story for you again today. It's called, The Pastor Plays Hooky. <laughs> there was a pastor who was a pastoring a fairly large church, and he was an avid golfer. And this particular Sunday when he got up, it was such a beautiful day. He said, it's a perfect golf day. And I was supposed to preach today, so I think I'm going to call my assistant and get an associate pastor to preach. So he did and said, um, I'm not feeling good today. Just please get an associate to, to take my place. And uh, the assistant said, okay, we'll all pray for you that you get better quickly. Well, you would have thought that the guilt there would have done something, but it didn't. He went away anyway. And off he went to play golf at this course that wasn't close by, so he didn't think he would run into anybody that knew him. So he's up on the first tee box, and he swings and hits the ball up. And just as he did that, a gust of wind came by and carried that ball another 50 yards. And plunk, right in the hole for a hole in one. He was, like, ecstatic. But up in heaven, the angel said to God, What'd you do that for? <laughs> and God just smiled, a little wry smile, and said, so who's he going to tell? <laughs> no reflection on you, Bruce. <laughs> Here's our prayer for today. Heavenly Father, thank you for promising to comfort and provide for us each day you give us many opportunities to draw near to you. So as we prepare for the day ahead, Holy Spirit, help us to discern if there is anything standing in the way of an intimate connection with you, anything that's sinful or unhealthy attachment to the world. And Lord, please give us the grace, the wisdom, and the strength today to do your will. Amen. Okay, we're going to um, sing our first hymn today, and it's Jesus Paid It All. And if you can stand, that would be great, and help me out here. Savior, say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me their all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but washed it white as snow. Indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone jesus paid it all all to him i owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow when the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died I save my life shall still repeat Jesus paid it all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain washed it white as snow
I forgot to mention, I wanted to thank um, Larry for doing the slides last week, Merla for doing the congregational prayer, and um, who's the third one? Who? I have to go back over there and sit a minute. <laughs> Let's, there was a third one. Who was it? Jane, oh, D D uh, Ellen. I'm so sorry. Ellen, thank you so much for taking my place. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, all right. Let's bow our head in prayer. Good morning, Father. We thank you that you still speak to us. We thank you for speaking in your gentle whisper gives us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us this morning, that we will press in close to you and hear your whispers and seek after you alone. Father, we lift the weary and discouraged and the stress and tensions in our lives, but we know you are with us, that we are never alone. Father, release your wisdom and revelation to us and inspiration to see your hand at work. You are our comforter. Father, we pray for our church. Fill it with truth, in all truth, with all peace. We thank you for our pastors and leaders and the blessings they bring to our congregation. We pray that you will help them to walk in determination, steadfastness, and endurance. Give them the strength to finish what they have started and endure to the end, just as Christ endured the cross. Father, the problems of this world seem overwhelming. You hear our prayers and know our hearts. We pray for your great healing on our land. Thank you for your daily presence in our lives, that we can be assured your heart is towards us, your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to the prayers of your people. Thank you for, that you surround us with favor as with a shield, and we are safe in your care. In your glorious name we pray, and we all say, Amen. Good morning. The scripture reading today is from Luke 23 through 27. Then he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. All right, we're ready. Oops, got me on. We're ready for our second hymn today, and it's one of my favorite hymns. It's called Majesty by Pastor Jack Hayford. If you'll stand with me, please, and we'll sing Majesty. Worship. 
worship his majesty Jesus who died now glorified King of all kings Okay and now we'll continue with the doxology God from whom our blessings flow. Praise Him, all people here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. His Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh. Pray for the offering. Lord, you are majestic. You are other than us. You are perfect and holy. And forgive us the times when we are arrogant. Try to tell you how you should run things. Try to tell you how you should bless us and give us things. Things which we often don't deserve. Lord, right now, I pray that you will uh, bless the offering for your kingdom. Jesus, knowing that such obedience positions us for blessing. It's in the name of Christ I pray. Amen. This song, I actually had a request for this song, and I didn't know it, so I had to learn it. And then I got these two guys to help me out here. And it's called, You Can't Be a Beacon If Your Light Don't Shine. And that word beacon, I thought, you know, I heard that someplace in the Bible. So I, it was bothering me, so I had to look it up. And it's from Isaiah, and it's uh, chapter 60. It said, I chose to pour my light into you so that you can be a beacon to others. Those words were just perfect for this song. So here we go with, you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. And there's a little light in all of us by God's design. But you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. How can you ask for truth when you do not truthfully live? How can you ask forgiveness if you don't forgive? I don't mean to bring you down and speak to you unkind, but you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design, but you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You ask the child to be honest and true When he can only judge what's right by what he sees in you How can you offer vision and walk around blind? You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine there's a little light in all of us by God's design But you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine May God's love surround you, may you find a brighter day May He grant you the peace you seek in every way God's light burns in every life, yours and mine But you can't be a beacon if you just let it shine 
You can be a beacon if you let it shine. You can be a beacon if you let it shine. There's little light in all of us by God's design. And you can be a beacon if you just let it shine. Okay. Let's pray. Jesus, will you speak to us? Lord, you have so much to give, and we make choices that prevent us from living in those blessings, those places of freedom that you offer us. Guard our minds, guard our hearts. Give us ears to hear in Christ's name. Amen. Um, so for the men's... Uh, cookout yesterday, I, I, I told Carol by his name it said military exclusion on what he was supposed to bring. I said, so what's military exclusion? He said, well, I was in the military, so I didn't have to bring anything. I said, oh, I thought you were going to bring some crazy dish, you know, that had some of this and some of that, you know, some military hash of some sort. So uh, I was corrected. I really wanted to see what military exclusion <laughs> tasted like, but... Um, so this is the third teaching out of this um, theme of invitation, and I can't put this together and make it this seamless, but I think if you go back and, and read the Scripture, uh, Invitation to Fellowship, Revelation 3, 19 and following, where Jesus talks about um, He rebukes or He exposes those things which keep us from Him, um, and He disciplines us because He loves us. And then he tells us to be earnest or wholehearted. And then he tells us to repent. Those are things that set us up for fellowship with him. And then last week we looked at rest and what that looks like to rest in him. And so today it's an invitation to freedom. And you've heard these verses before. You'll know them well, but we're going to look a little deeper. Um, and my son was looking at my notes. He goes, what's this about? Because in big, bold letters I have, this is shocking because it shocked me because I didn't know this was what it meant. So we're going to jump in. Uh, Luke 9.23, uh, Jesus is speaking, then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So I've said this before, we talk about all, you know, the Ten Commandments and all the commandments, 633 in the Old Testament, but there are actually more commandments in the New Testament than the Old. You're told to do things far more. And so, like last week, again this week, there, there's a couple of imperatives here. And in the English language, it means do it. Don't wait. Do it. Get it done. Clean your room, child. Take the trash out. Okay, I'm sure you could give plenty from your West Point training and Ranger School. But what does it mean to deny yourself? Jesus uses a word that means Refuse to agree with what your old self wants to do. Refuse to agree with it. I don't want to exercise today. Refuse to agree with it. I just want to complain. Refuse to, nope, cut it off. I just want to think this, buy that, drink, whatever. Whatever. Refuse to agree with what the old self wants. Why? Because it's preventing you from living in the freedom and me from living in the freedom that the Lord offers. It also means to disregard. I'm just not going to listen to it. How many times have you felt anxious, uneasy, restless about something? You get the news, you watch the news. Something comes up, you feel bad about something, there's something that happened 20 years ago that crops up, and you feel bad about it, you feel shame about it, just stop it. Now, I know, that's not behavior modification, but talking to ourselves and saying, no, no, 
Jesus forgave me. I, I'm, not, I'm not going there. We're not going there. Sometimes if, if we're with a contentious person, they want to stir up the pot or they want to gossip, nope. I'm just going to act like you didn't say that. You're just trying to provoke someone. We're not going to do that. Don't pay attention to it. So when he says deny, deny yourself. Because you know we're not perfect this side of heaven. And he says it's got to be daily. A friend of mine describes it like this. You, and we talked about this at Bible study on Monday. When you wake up in the morning, you have to rehydrate yourself every day. You can't not. I'm not going to scold you for not drinking enough water. Okay. It's daily. You don't think about it with water. You don't think about it with liquid. But we don't think about it spiritually. So daily. The second thing is this. He says, take up your cross. Now, this is interesting. This is the part that was shocking to me. It's the same word that the people cried out to have done with Jesus. In Luke 23, 18, I don't know why the NIV does this, and this was a couple of my professors. What they say is, away with this man, release Barabbas. But it's the same word here as take up your cross. So what they were saying was, kill him, not away with him. I don't know why the NIV cleans it up, because it's a shocking thing. Execute him. Do it. It's a strong word. They were just saying, hey, take Jesus away. Destroy him. Literally, execute him. Or release the other guy. That made me think about the crowd a little different. Away with him sounds nice. But to say execute or destroy, kill... That's harsh. But that's the word that Jesus says about taking up your cross. You have to execute that old person, those old thoughts, those default thoughts. Those things which seem comfortable, which may seem more logical. Because those are the very things that are keeping us from freedom. You know, the North American Christian dream is this. The North American Christian dream. I'm being sarcastic. It's in quotes. Avoid hell. Gravitate towards comfort. And collect stuff. (laughs) One of the most profitable businesses you could be in right now, and we've talked about this before, is to be in the storage, building, construction business and running business, that's the way to go. Custom storage, not just custom homes, custom storage. (laughs) Jesus is saying, we've got to wake up every day. When that voice starts, hey, you don't need to exercise today. You don't need to spend time with Jesus. Disregard it. In fact, get to the point where you're willing to execute and destroy those thoughts. Every single day. Because, you know, when we are comfortable, we are often not growing. If you get in your comfort recliner long enough, your muscles will go. They'll atrophy. Same thing happens spiritually. Jesus goes on to say this. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Now, this is really interesting. There's part of this I understand, and part of it I still don't understand. Because the word he uses is psyche. It's a word we use for soul. It could be life as well. I understand the first part. I, I still don't understand the second part, how we're supposed to kind of understand it. Because it can be read, whoever wants to rescue or deliver or heal their own soul or life 
you'll actually lose it. That's kind of profound. Jesus says if you want to heal or deliver or rescue your own soul or life, to do it yourself and feel good about yourself and be self-sufficient and independent of Him, you're guaranteed to lose it. If you try to do Christianity your own way and say, well, I tried it, it doesn't work, you will lose. If you try to live life, if I try to live life in a way that's contrary to what He says, I'm guaranteed 100% to lose interesting. I can't heal myself. I can't rescue myself. Some of you may say, well, it's, it's kind of rigged. I guess it is. Because we have to be dependent on Him, and we don't like asking for help. We think incorrectly, but we think incorrectly that real freedom is doing it on our own making our own decisions. But we talked, I may have used this as an illustration previously. We think leaving the house and getting out on our own is freedom until the bills start coming. Right, Caleb? Yeah. If I can just fill in the blank. Because if we're thinking, if I can just, then I'll really live. It's usually something we are trying to buy a award, a recognition, something we're trying to get, a relationship we're trying to gain, a position we're trying to fill. It's usually not the other direction. Whoever wants to rescue or deliver, heal, save their own life or soul, you'll lose it. But whoever loses, and this is where life fits a little better because I don't know how it would look to lose your soul. Whoever loses their life for me will save it. In freedom, to find freedom, to find resurrection, you can't go to resurrection until you go through the cross. That's where the execution happens. My wrongful desires. And you're not going to go to the cross until you go through the garden which is where the wrestling happens. In fact, the Apostle Paul actually agrees with this. Joyce, I, I thought of you because you would be really excited about this based upon our Monday night discussion. The Apostle Paul would say this in 1 Corinthians 15, 31. As for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? He says, I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says, I die every day. He goes on to say this, and I'm going to read this, and this is a bit lengthy, but this will put it in perspective. This is the Apostle Paul from Philippians 3, but listen to the overlap, because we're talking about denying what we want, not trying to save our own life, being willing to lose our life for the sake of Christ. Paul says this, Whatever was to my profit or my gain, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. So there it is. That's the denying. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. In fact, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law by the work. By the way, Paul's word for rubbish is a street word for excrement. It's the S word. Okay? Scubula. I know some of you want to go around saying bull scubula. I know a couple of you. He's going to go on. Now listen to this. Paul has... Paul understands... What's saying no to things of the past? Because what? Sometimes you want to live in the glory days. Man, I, I, really, I was really good there. I was awesome. Paul's saying it doesn't matter. Remember, Pharisee, Pharisee, born on the eighth day, tribe of Benjamin. He was the man. He said it doesn't matter. With athletes, they say you're only as good as your last game. With actors, they say you're only as good as your last movie. With entertainers, you're only as good as your last performance. Paul says this, 
actually, I want to know Christ. And I want to know the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings to become like Him in His death. There's losing your life. And so somehow to attain to the resurrection of the dead, not that I've already obtained it or already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Paul's mindset is, I've done some things. Some people would say, that's great. But I've worked it out with Jesus because the stuff I've done compared to who he is, it's rubbish. It's garbage. Now, why would we want to tell ourselves how good we are? Well, if we think we want to try to get away with something, rationalize, justify, compare ourselves to this struggling believer over here, we can start to feel pretty good about ourselves. Well, I didn't do what they did. I've been to church. I read the Scripture. I even read it, Harry did you go Ben? Or I led worship, or I made quilts, or whatever. We start to do that self-talk when we're trying to get away with something and trying to live independent of Christ. And you know what? That kind of thinking keeps us captive. It's what got Satan kicked out of heaven. Isaiah 15. Arrogance. Paul saying, not, I, I, haven't, I haven't got there yet. This side of heaven, we're still going. But I've, I've had to sit down and deal with some things and say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, I'm going to kill that thought. And you know what? When I wake up tomorrow, the thought's going to be right there, and I've got to kill it again. Maybe this is why, for those of you in the Galatian study, he went out and spent three years in the desert he was working through some pharisaical pride. The Lord was working on him. Brothers, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold. One thing I do, I forget what is behind, and I strain for what is ahead. I press on, to know, I press on towards the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So if it's something, a thought, maybe it's a sin you committed or somebody that you've wronged or a crime that you've committed, those come up. Doesn't matter. Christ forgave you, move on. Yeah, but I feel shameful about it. Then kill it and move on. Yeah, but look how good I was. Kill it and move on. Those are the things you might as well just go put the handcuffs back on again. You might as well go put on the old grave clothes again because we're wanting to live like the old dead self. Can you see that trying to keep our life safe and to ourselves, it's actually captivity. Jesus wants us to live open-handed with our possessions, open-hearted with our prayers. It seems illogical. I told Caleb I was going to use an illustration that involves him since Caleb was 12, people have told him he has opportunity to play soccer, get paid for it, which is great. He's been over to Spain, and he played with some, kid, some, uh, some teams that were older than him and did quite well, had a knee injury. And so this summer, a friend of mine who coaches in Brazil in the pro league said, I want him to come over. And he and I talked about it. He was at school, and he goes to a Christian school. And I said, hey, Jordy, why don't you come play for him? I said, and, and that can really excite you, but I want you to spend a couple of weeks and just process it. Let the emotion die down. Think through it. Pray through it. Talk with the Lord. Let you and I talk about it. Caleb goes to a Christian school that's in a town of 3,000 in Indiana, Upland, Indiana. If you didn't see signs, you would drive right past it. Some things about a school. Um... There's some challenges with the coach. You may not know the game that you're trying to play as good as you would like. Um, 
Because he was injured, he had to travel all the games and watch his team lose a lot of them. They're not very good. The dormitory, through the eaves, some bats got in. That's encouraging. A couple kids got bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How it didn't make national news, I don't know. But it's Upland, Indiana, right? <laughs> and then he was sitting in the dining hall one day, and he saw the uh, state health department sitting there. And then they closed down the dining hall because of some rodent issues. So he prayed through this because he can go to Brazil and maybe start getting a paycheck to play. I mean, who doesn't want to play a sport, get paid for it? And he said, this is going to sound crazy. But I think God wants me here next year. And I said, well, that, that's really illogical. It sounds like God, doesn't it? To ask us to do the crazy thing, maybe on the front end the less fun thing, the less glamorous. And we don't know why. There's freedom in saying no to what we want because we trust that whatever it is that God has is for His glory and for our good. Even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, how do we get there? I say it every week. This is why he talks about praying, fasting, and giving. It really is. Intentional, self-imposed, difficulty and struggle to give money away for God's kingdom to stop food, which brings comfort and energy, to struggle. A friend of mine stopped by the other day and dropped some things off and said, they were just in a mood and said, hey, I'm, they text me later and said, hey, I'm sorry to, to just vent. I'm, I'm trying this fasting thing. And I'm hangry. <laughs> yeah. Are you willing? Because we want freedom but without the execution, the dying. We want the goodies, but we want them now. And God says, you work on the humbling part of yourself. I'll worry about the exalting of you. Zephaniah 3.17, he sings over us. It's delayed gratification. What if he asks you to do something crazy and you don't see it this side of heaven? Do you trust that the reward in heaven, the treasures in heaven, will be that good? He says they will. He believes they will. He's been there. Paul actually got to, got to go there. Had a little out-of-body experience. And they got a thorn to keep him humble. Do we believe that saying no to our own brilliance, but saying yes to God, what sometimes seems illogical, is accepting the invitation to freedom? Because it is. It really is. Let's pray.
Lord, your kingdom is upside down to the way this world thinks, to the way we naturally think, and, and we need supernatural thinking. We need revelation from you. We need insight from your Holy Spirit to recognize. Give us the courage, Lord, to execute that part of us which fights against you, which wants to doubt you, which wants to comfort us and gratify our own sinful flesh, all the while slowly slipping the chains around our hands, wrists, and feet and ankles. You so bad want us to experience all that you have for us. Give us the courage to go after it. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. And we'll recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. As we prepare for communion, we'll stay seated and sing, Come Share the Lord. We gather here in Jesus' name. As we come to the table, continuing that thought of what the sermon was about, use it as a place of surrender. It's unique for each one of us, and the Holy Spirit, in amazing fashion, can deal with each one of us simultaneously. But have the courage, have that conversation. If it's something that's connected to shame, lay it down. Pride, you know what it is. Don't leave the doors today and miss freedom. This is why he died, to take it from us. We're not being rude by giving him our hard things. We're actually honoring him 
and what he did on the cross. It's beautiful. So let's pray the prayer that Jesus, before he went to the cross, prayed with his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven. Okay, before we go our separate ways, we're going to sing our final hymn today, and it's called Standing on the Promises. And let's stand. Thank you. 
So our benediction. Execute the old self so that we can be free. Be blessed. We're dismissed. Thank you, guys.